Thank you so much for uh, for having us. Welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm very thrilled to to meet you and to uh, to get to know you a little bit better. Um, you being the artist in residence this year for the Philharmonie. Um, before we start talking about your career and your music and about the concert you're gonna play, can you tell us what you just played over there on your piano? Uh, this was excerpt from Scriabin Sonata Number no. Two. This will be actually opening piece of my program also on the 3rd of September. Ooh, nice! Can't wait. <laughs> can you can you tell a little bit about why you picked this one? Well, this is in general one of my most favorite sonatas by Scriabin. It's uh, the first sonata I ever played from him. And it's incredibly beautiful, incredibly romantic in a way. He wrote it when he was on the holidays in Crimea and he was inspired by the sea, by the moon, by the wonderful Crimean night. And um, actually also for this concert, it will be quite a new thing which I'm going to be doing because three pieces out of the program I will be playing with videos which me and Nikki, my husband, Nikki Schwartz, mm -hmm. we together uh, made, especially for these pieces of music and Scrabbing Second Sonata will be one of them. Whoa, okay, I was gonna talk later about, but now you got me thrilled. You're gonna show <laughs> videos? Yeah, so what there will be a do? big screen, there yeah. will be a big screen on stage. Uh -huh. And uh, while I will be playing, the video will be also playing and basically it will be synchronized. The video will be made thinking of the music. And uh, well, with Scrabbing Sonata, I think it will be a little bit more abstract, but then the other two videos will be with uh, the Falia uh, Ritual Dance of Fire. Fire. Yeah, that will be in the variant of the yeah. concert. And in the middle, there will be a Lonely Wonder by Edward Grieg. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, this Norway. video is from Norway, from almost North Pole, the northernmost point of Norway, where we also were with Nikki. It was one of the last festivals before the lockdown we went. So you went to Norway to make these videos uh, and these you're going to show at your concert on the 3rd of this month. Yes, well, we wait to play also, <laughs> but of course. while we were playing, we also made the videos. And uh, yeah, that was still something we managed to do before lockdown, mm -hmm. this video from Norway. And then the Ritual Dance of Fire we filmed here in the, in the Netherlands. So we went to the place where fire was allowed to be made and <laughs> then we did some, some interesting things around it. And then the third video for uh, Scrabbing Second Sonata, this uh, was most, well, there are different shots of water mainly because for me, this music is very much related to water and that's also what Scrabbing was telling about. We have water theme, fire, mm -hmm. yes, so also it's a earth. Bit of elements. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and nice. also a bit of air in uh, the part of Chopin, two pieces. Mm -hmm. The Fantasy Impromptu, I think there is also a lot Ooh, of wind. It sounds airy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So it's a bit of elements program. And, uh, and yeah, that was the idea which came long time ago when we were speaking with Lisbeth about mm -hmm. my residency. And uh, we had this idea with Nikki already for a long time to make some musical videos to kind of enhance even more the meaning of music or imagination of a listener as well just to give a little bit of a mm. boost of connection nice. and uh, yeah and she liked the idea so basically we were working on it also during lockdown which was handy and so let's go back to the beginning um for those who don't know you're born in ukraine both your parents are musicians uh, and you started to play the piano very early at the age of five so can you take us a little bit back to, to the start? How did your love for the piano start and develop? Yes, I think from the very beginning of my life, uh, everything, basically the world was connected with music and music was part of my life even from before I was born because my mother was 
playing and I know that she was learning Goldberg variations while I was in her belly, which was quite a nice way to be cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Started very early. Yes, uh -huh. but uh, then I think even when I was not even four years old, my parents started to teach me and I have this videos which I recently discovered where I'm playing together with my mother for hands when I'm four years old. At the first concert I played when I was five and then everything started. Both my parents were my teachers mm -hmm. and yeah, we were... Can you, can you tell me a little bit about that? Because I understood your father, Boris Fedorov, was also a pia pianist and he was not only your father but he was also your, your, your piano teacher. What was that like? Yeah, both my parents. Both, they both are pianists, both are great teachers yeah. and they both were teaching at the school where I was studying from my early childhood and also in the conservatory in Kiev. So, uh, yeah, it was from one side, it was amazing because, uh, of course, they both are amazing musicians and to have them at home and constantly also focusing on me and helping me and giving all their wonderful advices and practicing with me, that was amazing. And uh, I am very, very grateful for this to them and mm. also to, in general, that this happened. But, of course, it had also difficulties and sometimes it was a lot of pressure at home and and uh, also a lot of late night lessons because mm. they both also were very busy with other students and sometimes my father would come home at 11 p.m. and then we would have a lesson until 2 a.m. or something like that. Mm. <laughs> yes, and um, yeah, so it was, it had some tough moments and in general to have this borderline between when the parent ends and teacher starts and what is this separation between being a parent and a teacher and how to actually be able to have holidays sometimes also from being a teacher but just to be a parent that was hard I think for both me and my parents but in the end it worked yeah, and actually. I'm very happy that <laughs> it was as it was and uh, my father was my official teacher until I was 18 and then he of course is still there still helping still listening also my mother so fast forward when did you come to the Netherlands uh, well, it was six years ago now, almost six years ago. And uh, the main push to come to the Netherlands was actually Nikki, because... Uh, Your love. Yes. Ah. <laughs> How did you two meet? Uh, we met in Brazil at the festival. Mm -hmm. It was December 2014, and that was the last year of my studies in London, where I was studying uh, in the Royal College of Music. And um, yeah, so we were performing at the festival and it was incredibly beautiful and very romantic atmosphere there. And uh, we fell in love. <laughs> nice. And then uh, I actually already was performing quite a lot in the Netherlands since I was 16. I was regularly here. My first manager was from the Netherlands, Rob Kroon. And um, mm, yeah, so it was already quite natural for me to be here for, for a while. And uh, I was uh, having concerts two weeks after we met with Nikki in the Netherlands. So that was another reason to see Nikki again. And during this trip, actually, it already became clear that that's something serious. And then he came to London to visit me several times. And I was anytime I had free time, I was coming to the Netherlands. And then during summer, we decided I should move here. So, so Nikki, your husband, uh, Nicolas Swart, he's playing in the Concertgebouw Orchestra. He plays the double bass. Um, what's it like to be with a musician? I am really happy because, well, from one side, we understand each other. We know what the life as a musician is like. And of course, he is absolutely incredible musician. He now not only playing bass, but also is playing cello. And we always played with him a lot of chamber music together and also duo. We just released the duo CD together with him on double bass and piano on channel classics. And uh, especially actually during the Corona time with the lockdown mm -hmm. and uh, well, all the concerts more or less canceled and nothing really happening. We played more than ever together and also with the musicians which are based in the Netherlands. We became much more rooted in the Netherlands during this time and uh, much fun. more active in the Netherlands actually. 
Yeah, so we, yeah, it's great. He's always supporting me. He's listening to me. He's giving me advices. We often travel together either to festivals where we perform together or sometimes if one of us is free and other has a tour, then one of us can join each other for a tour. Sounds like and a dream. Yeah, it, it's great. And even though we both were, well, were <laughs> now again, are, are busy. busy. Yeah. Yes, uh, and traveling a lot, but still we were managing to see each other and spend nice. time with each other a lot during this whole time. But how was that for the last one and a half year? Because usually you're traveling a lot, of course. Yeah, that was the most time we spent together yeah. sure, <laughs> without a break. You still love each other? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's great. We passed the test of Corona. Mm. And how do you do that uh, with rehearsing? Because I mean, I, I understand there's a lot of music here in the house. Yeah. When you're playing the piano, he's playing the cello. How do you, how do, you yeah, do that? Yeah, that's a little disadvantage <laughs> of a uh, very open house as we have, because basically we don't have doors. <laughs> it's a very nice house indeed, but it's very... <laughs> okay, so how do you manage? Yeah, but uh, well, either we practice one by one, or if we have to practice at the same time, then uh, Nikki goes into the bedroom and I sometimes either still play on the grand piano or I go to the electric keyboard and play with headphones. So then we don't really disturb each other ah. and we can still practice at the same time. So how was the rest of the lockdown for you besides rehearsing and giving virtual concerts? Um, what else did you do? Did you discover some new hobbies? Uh, yeah, so it was at first when lockdown started, it was really unusual because suddenly we were at home, we didn't have concerts coming up and we ate a lot. Basically the first month, I guess we were cooking the most and also we were doing a lot of streams. We so what's your, new, what's your new signature dish? What's Anna's dish now? Uh, the courgette, stuffed courgette flowers. Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put the recipe in the... <laughs> so virtual concerts as well. Uh, yeah, of course, virtual concerts. And uh, also during this time, we started experimenting with Nikki with some actually mixing uh, different uh, forms of art. So mm. we did some uh, poetry concerts, we did uh, some musical videos, and this is also part of my concert in Harlem on the 3rd of September. Also with, uh, well, we became friends and very close friends and uh, we played a lot with some incredible Dutch-based musicians such as Daniel Roland, Maya Bogdanovich, and we did twice um, uh, online festivals with them from Bethlehem Kirk Studio 150. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound too bad, your lockdown, actually. Yes, exactly. That was really a miracle of lockdown that we were able to play there a lot with the highest quality of uh, audio. Mm -hmm. And the camera work now is also of the highest level. At first they started just with uh, iPhones and then over the time they were upgrading and upgrading and now they have a fully professional setup for live streams. Super cool. And uh, yeah, and we played a lot and we did uh, also creative videos together also with Daniel and Maya and Dana Zemtsov and uh, uh, yeah, and performing it also at these festivals. So now the next uh, concert season is uh, almost starting uh, and you're going to be the artist in residence of the Philharmonie. What, what does this residency mean to you? Well, I love the hall, first of all, in Harlem. I remember I played there first time when I was, I think, 18 and uh, I enjoyed it incredibly, the, the concert. It was really beautiful acoustic and uh, great atmosphere also of the hall. And uh, we were speaking about my residency for already a couple of years with Lisbeth, so it was long time coming. I was cooking for cooking quite a while. Cooking for a while, yeah. yes. And uh, so a part of the recital, there will be also two more concerts, mm -hmm. two chamber music concerts. One of them will be quite a big scale with uh, percussions and second piano. So yeah. it will be a program of Bartok uh, Sonata for two, two pianos, pianos and, and percussion, two, two percussionists percussion, right? and yeah. many percussion instruments. And then how you come up with this program? Do you think of it as a philharmonie? Is it really a collaboration? Yes, collaboration. I, I suggested, I had some ideas and then we went over it together with Lisbeth and uh, with the programmer of the yes, Philharmonie. With yeah. the program, yeah. And the third concert will be chamber music with five musicians. And, and then you pick the musicians or? Yeah. yeah. yeah so, so you get to pick all your favorite musicians to come and play with you. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, and friends also. The, uh, the 
musicians for the concert in spring, which we will have child quintet and uh, some other different chamber music pieces. This is uh, a group of amazing musicians and quite old friends already with whom we played for many years mm -hmm. together. Uh, it's Elberg Hamting from Norway, an amazing violinist, Benedict Klockner, cellist, whom also was there in Brazil when I met Nikki and with whom we played oh, for almost 10 years there. together your love. already. <laughs> Yeah, and Dana Zemtsov, my great friend, amazing violist, and Nikki. So that's going to be a lot of really fun. Really great, great uh, group, and of course, will be also amazing music making. Super, super. Looking forward to that. But first, we have the the solo recital coming up on the third of September. So we're going to hear songs of Schubert. We're going to hear Manuel de Falla, The Fire. We're going to hear some Chopin, Air. We're going to hear what else was there? Greek. Norway, Greek, of course, Norway. <laughs> We're going to see beautiful visuals. Yes, super nice. I can't yes, wait. I'm really looking forward. And it will be the first time actually that I will be performing live with uh, so many also live videos <laughs> and performing with them simultaneously. Because, uh, well, we did it during the lockdown with the live stream. We mm. did also some performance with the videos, but to do it actually for the live audience. This and now will finally be a new playing experience. for audience again. Yes. Yeah, what did you miss <laughs> most? Maybe be it cliche, but what did you miss most about playing for an audience? What are you looking forward to for well, next season? Well, that's completely different feeling than playing for cameras, of course. You feel the energy, you feel the interaction, and and it's just you cannot recreate it for camera even though you know that there are thousands of people maybe watching behind those cameras but the real life people that's you know, energy that comes yeah, yeah. <laughs> well thank you so much anna for this uh, for this interview uh, i can't wait to hear you on the, the 3rd of september and uh, thanks so much again for having us here in this beautiful place thank you so much i'm really looking forward <laughs> to the concert